Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. I am so excited because today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and flip through of the Always Fully Booked Planner by Little Inglings Designs. This is a planner that is both a reading journal and a typical daily planner. It is probably one of the best reading journals I have found in my years keeping track of the reading that I've done. I've only purchased this one other time. It was back for the 2021 reading year and unfortunately I fell off of it and didn't continue with it. But now that I'm back into it and now that I'm back into doing booktube, I definitely wanted to have something more substantial to not only track my reading but plan out my videos and also potentially daily and weekly to do's. She typically has has four versions of the planner. She has two in a horizontal layout and two in a vertical layout. So I have the black and white vertical layout. There's also a black and white horizontal, color vertical, and color horizontal. At the time that I'm filming this video, the only one still left in stock is the color vertical. So if you watch my flip through and think that this might be something you're interested in, I would go ahead and grab it because typically once they're gone, they're gone. She will do a brief restock in December, but after that, once they're gone, she does not restock them again because this is a dated planner. She does have what's called a novel companion. So that is basically for reading tracking only and it doesn't contain the weekly layouts that this planner does. So if you are purely interested in something to track your reading, you might be interested in a novel companion, which she does typically do restocks of throughout the year as it is undated and you can start it at any point. So if you miss out on this planner for 2023 or if you are not interested in having the typical weekly spreads for daily planning, you may wanna go ahead and check out her a novel companion. I will go ahead and link her business down below so that you can get on that as quickly as possible. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the flip through. All right, y'all, here it is. This is my reading planner from Little Inglings Designs. This is by far the best reading planner that I have found. And while I will definitely need to customize some of the spreads, it is still well worth it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do a quick flip through so you can see what the planner is. And if there are still any in stock by the time that this video goes live, I will be sure to link it all down below. She does typically do a restock at some point in December and so if you're interested you might want to go ahead and follow her social media or sign up for her newsletter so that you can try to snag one if you are interested in it. All right it is beautifully packaged. I'm just going to go ahead and tear open this sticker here and there it is. Let me remove it from the plastic and we'll get into the flip through. All right, y'all, here she is. This is the Always Fully Booked Planner by Little Inklings. I got the black and white design. She also has a colorful counterpart. Both of the planners typically come in horizontal and vertical planning spreads, and you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. So mine has a black cover and this beautiful white design on the cover. It's got golden coils, corner protectors here, which is a really nice touch, and there is also a band that goes around it. All right, then when you open it up, you have these lovely designs here on this end page and then a sample sticker sheet of stickers that she typically sells within her shop. Here we have the This Planner Belongs To page where you can put whatever personal information you want to ensure that this planner gets back to you in case it is ever lost. Here we have the 2023 Year at a Glance spread. This could come in handy when you're trying to figure out like maybe what day of the week a certain event falls on and so on and so forth. I typically don't use this spread for anything, but it is nice to have. Here is where we start to get into some of the planning. So you have the star rating system here. And when joining the Facebook group, I noticed that they have this fun tradition of using like movie or television show or song lyric or book quotes to make their star rating system. So you'll find a quote that kind of corresponds really well to each star rating. And I'm considering doing either Hamilton or Supernatural quotes for this. It's just a fun little added touch. You can also make a list of a handful of your most anticipated books. Here are some conversion forms formulas for the tracking. Like it tells you how to calculate the percentage of a book that's read or the audiobook time listened to page count. So that's cool. And here is where you can keep track of the legends. So like color coding, you can do the color coding here and refer back to it if you need to. This is a 2023 goals spread. It's very plain with just white boxes. So you can get as creative as you want. You can just do hand lettering, which is probably what I will do. I am not an artistic person whatsoever. Or you can do like stickers, drawings, however you want to go ahead and do this layout. She really made it so that you 
you can let your creativity run wild with this one. Here's the first of two reading checklist spreads. You can really customize this to fit your own needs. I do not think that I will be using it to write down all of the books that I've read throughout the year. And that is because in a couple of pages, there's a full two page bookshelf design. And I'm going to use that to kind of write down all of the books that I read. I think I'm going to customize this to keep track of some of the challenges that I've set for myself, like the authors that I want to try in 2023 or the 23 books I plan to read in 2023. So there are a handful of things I think that I'm going to be using these pages for. And then here is the second two page reading checklist spread. And there is also a third. For some reason, I think I was thinking there was only two, but there is three. So six total reading checklist pages. So there definitely should be a lot of room to keep track of what you read throughout the year if that's how you want to do it. But I think I'm going to customize this for something else. And then here's that bookshelf spread I was talking to you about. This is another area where you can get really creative. Some people will write the names of the books on the spines and then color code it to like the genre the book was or perhaps the star rating that they gave. Some even try to replicate the spines of the actual books, which I will definitely not be doing, but it is so fun if you are able to do that. I think I'm going to be writing down the names of the books and then color coding based on star rating. There's also a book series tracker, which I feel is a really nice touch. I'm going to try to be a lot more mindful about the series that I have in progress because I have a ton. I will be actually making a video for Bookmas about all of the series that I am currently in the middle of. I don't know if that will be up by the time this video goes live, but there are so many and I want to try to knock some of those out in 2023 before I start any new ones. So I think this spread will come in very handy. Here we have the quote section. Now this is really not something that I typically ever utilize. I typically do not take the time to write down quotes. And since I listen to audiobooks, it's really difficult for me to actually keep track of them, but I may keep this spread as it is, or I may customize it. Here is another quote spread and another. Here we get into a wish list. Now, if you're like me, you probably have your Amazon wish list continuously updated with the books that you want. I think I'm going to use this wish list for other items as well, things that maybe I can't add to my Amazon wish list, or maybe just write down things that I want to add to my Amazon wish list and need a place to keep track of that until I actually can. But I really like this added touch of the wish list. Another spread that I'm excited about is the movie and TV trackers that she includes in here in the planner that I was using for 2022, there was no such spread. And so I was actually using the quote section to keep track of what I was watching in 2023. So I'm excited to go ahead and have this. And then here's the TV tracker. So this is going to come in really handy to keep track of what I've been watching throughout 2023. There is also a spread here where you can keep track of all the five star reads. This is a very generous spread in my opinion, considering I've maybe given five books, five stars in 2022, but some people might be a little bit more generous than I am with their five star ratings, but you can definitely keep track of that here. Here's another spread that you can really interpret however you want. You can see that she left this area blank for you to really just use your imagination. I think what I'm going to do is use this spread to determine the best book of every month since there are 12 books. I will probably do like the best of January, February, March, etc. And it actually says right up here, whether you record book club picks, your favorite book of each month, your top books of the year, or book selections for book boxes, this page is open to your creativity. I really, really appreciate that. She gave a a lot of flexibility here. Now we're getting into some of the challenges. That's another thing that I really love about this planner is that she pre-puts in some popular challenges that we might already be familiar with. There's actually a challenge that is specifically dedicated to this planner as well. In the planner that I was using for 2022, I had to manually put the A to Z challenge in there. So I love that there is a spread completely dedicated to that. And here is that reading challenge that is specifically for the fully booked reading challenge. So this is not something that you're really going to find anywhere else. And she made it so that if you have the ability to like print the book covers, you can instead of just writing them in or things, which was a fun little touch. Here we have the on the cover reading challenge where you read books with covers featuring the following items. And then here is the read the rainbow challenge, which is another one I had to manually put into the planner that I was using for 2022. So I love that it's just here waiting for me. We have a genre reading challenge, read through the ages challenge. And then this is the around the world reading challenge. Here is a reading goal tracker where you can kind of color in the squares as you read the books. I believe there's only one page of that. 
Yeah, there's only one page of that. So if you typically read more than 126 books, you might want to use the spread for something else. You can color in each square as you read a book. Maybe you can use stickers, like you can do format stickers. So anytime you read an audio book, an ebook, or a physical book, you can put stickers corresponding to each one there. So again, a lot of these spreads have a lot of interpretation to them that you can kind of use how you want, which I love. Then we get into the battle of the books brackets, which is another fun little game that you can do where you can pit your favorites of the year against each other to figure out the ultimate winner. This is another one that you can use absolutely however you want to to track whatever you want to. I haven't decided if I'm going to use this or what I'm going to use it for. I believe there might be a separate page tracker already in here and I don't read physically anyway so that wouldn't really be what I use this for but I'm going to think about it. Yes, here's the pages read in 2023. So that's probably not something I'm going to be using. But what I like about here is that you have the ability to create your own pie charts for the genres, the book format, and the star ratings that you gave in 2023, which I think is great. This will be fun to play with during the year. And now we're getting into just some of the blank dot grid pages, which I appreciate because I'm going to use these to add even more reading challenges in. I got a lot of stickers for this planner and some of them were reading challenge stickers. So I definitely have ways to fill these pages. So we have two, four, six, and then we are here in January. So I'm going to go through January and give you an idea of what the month looks like. All of the months are going to be the same, but I will go ahead and run through the cover art for each month. So here we have the month at a glance. I find this extremely helpful for meal planning and video planning. That is definitely what I will be using it for. Then she gives you a place to put your TBR for the month, as well as any new releases that you may have your eye on. I don't typically keep track of the new releases every single month, but it's nice for those who do. And here is where we actually get into the weekly spreads. So this is the vertical layout and then there is also the horizontal layout which has more room. It's like horizontal boxes where you can just free write text or put stickers or whatnot. So I'm just going to flip through these really quick. And then here at the end of the month, you can write down all of the books that you purchased or acquired throughout the month. And here is where you can put your reading wrap up. There's also a space up here to keep track of stats. So the number of books you read, the best book, the pages, the hours, number of DNFs, the format, the genres, and then currently loving box right here. And then at the end of the month, you get one more dot grid page and a page of lined note paper. I think this would be a great place for me to keep track of any monthly challenges that I'm doing, whereas the front of the reading planner would be dedicated to more year long reading challenges. All right, and then here we are to February. Loving these designs. She is so talented and creative. So like I said, I'm going to go ahead and flip through all of the different monthly art until we get to the back of the planner. There's March, April. Oh, and I should mention there is a quarterly check-in. There's a quarterly check-in after every single quarter until you get to the very end where there's also going to be a yearly check-in. So you have a box here for standout reads, what you're currently loving in terms of author, character, TV show, movie, music, and place you visited, a genre breakdown of all of the genres that you've read and how many, reading goal progress, and again, more reading stats and the formats, memorable moments, goals progress, and books you want to read in the next quarter. Again, so there's April, May, June, Oh, I love this. That's so cute. July, August. Um, this is actually, I believe, the same print that is on the colorful version. It is stunning. I had a really hard time choosing and part of me kind of wishes I'd gotten the colorful, but I, I love this one as well. But there's just something so stunning about this design. September, super cute. Look at the little puppy. October. November. And then I think this is very similar to the design that's on the front of the cover, or this is very similar to the design that was on the 2021 planner, I believe. And December. Okay. So after December, here you have your 2023 reading wrap up and you can kind of go back to your quarterly wrap ups and it'll make it a lot easier. I feel to fill out this. It's a lot of the same kind of things that you were keeping track of in the quarterly wrap up. So it's handy to have all of that information. Here she gives us a coloring page and this is also a coloring page, but it's now going to lead to several pages for book reviews. So here is what the book review spread looks like. I don't think I will be using these spreads just because I do my reviews on Goodreads and I think it would probably be really laborious to try to keep track of everything by hand, but this would be a great place to keep track of notes as I'm reading, like notes that I maybe want to discuss in videos. So I do like that this is here and I might be able to find a way to repurpose it later. Okay, so we are finally here at the end. I believe if I counted correctly, there were 60 pages of book reviews. That is a lot of pages. That's a lot of pages 
that I'm not going to be able to use, but if you feel like you can use them, she definitely gives you ample space to write down book reviews. And then you're getting into more dot grids. So I appreciate the inclusion of more dot grid pages. I might be able to utilize this for other things that I need to track throughout the year. Things that might not necessarily have to do with reading, but things that I want to be able to have in my planner and carry along with me. So we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, and then we're getting into lined paper and there is a handful of lined paper sheets in the back as well. All right, and that is the end. And here is the ribbon bookmark. And there is the back of the design. All right, y'all, that is the Always Fully Booked Planner by Little Inklings Design. I hope that you enjoyed. Like I said, if you were interested, please check out her shop as soon as possible before they all sell out. Or this might be something you wanna keep on your radar for 2024. If you go ahead and follow her social media sites or get her newsletter or things like that, she will let you know when the pre-orders open for these planners so that you don't miss out on snagging one if you miss out for 2023. These are some of the best pre-designed reading planners that I've ever found. I find bullet journaling to be a very stressful endeavor because as much as I love the complete customization of a bullet journal, I am not a creative person and I am certainly not an artistic person. And so the idea of creating bullet journal spreads is completely overwhelming to me. And I know it's not going to be something that I maintain. With this, I find that there is enough room in here for me to customize, especially with like the blank dot grid and lined pages. There are also a lot of reading challenges in here that I was going to do anyway and would have had to manually add if they were not already included. There's plenty of space to write down TBRs and hauls and checklists and it's just fantastic. If you are a reader that likes to physically keep track of what you are reading every single month, you cannot go wrong with the Always Fully Booked Planner. That's all that I have for this video. Please comment down below and let me know if you are a planner, if you like to plan out your reading physically, if you have spreadsheets, please let me know how you keep track of what you're reading or if you just keep track of everything via Goodreads. I definitely use Goodreads heavily still. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already because I would sure love to see you in my next video. Bye guys.